Hello, oh, welcome to our first online uh, Jenkins governance meeting. Uh, today is April 22nd. Uh, Usually we do governance meetings using uh, Jenkins meeting IRC chat, but today we have special agenda and we decided to try out uh, using uh, Zoom and video calls for that, similar to how we organize uh, Jenkins special interest group meetings. Today we have several uh, topics for the agenda. So it's uh, a discussion of Jenkins roadmap, as we agreed at the previous governance meeting, we would like to officially call it a first roadmap meeting and to discuss a uh, public roadmap for the Jenkins project. Uh, then we have uh, a topic about the Google season of dogs application, a report to a software in public interest. It's our umbrella organization at the moment. And also a request uh, to use uh, Jenkins logo. So these are all topics we have on the list, and if you have something else, please don't hesitate uh, to add it uh, into the bottom. Okay, uh, let's start from uh, Jenkins uh, roadmap. Mm, I could do a quick introduction. Uh, okay. um, so um, historically, Jenkins uh, project. Uh, didn't have any specific roadmap or explicit plans how it would evolve. Uh, firstly, it's uh, because of how Jenkins community was organized. We are a uh, community-driven project, so basically the project evolves in the directions where we have contributors. Uh, but in the recent years, we started uh, self-organizing in the community, so we introduced special interest groups, we introduced uh, uh, sub-projects. And uh, now we could uh, we actually do a lot of coordinated effort in the project, even uh, though it evolves in the same way. And uh, one of uh, usual requests from uh, Jenkins users, especially from uh, big uh, companies using Jenkins and vendors who build products on the top of Jenkins, was to have a kind of roadmap which would show where the community evolves, uh, uh, which uh, areas we focus, and where we facilitate contributions. So I think that it's a good time to discuss that. Uh, during the Contributor Summit in Brussels, uh, we had around uh, 20 contributors there, and uh, this topic was widely supported. So I went ahead and drafted the Jenkins Enhancement Proposal, which would document uh, the roadmap process. So it basically makes uh, Jenkins roadmap firstly public. So everything is public, including data, including process. Everyone is welcome to participate. Everything happens through open channels. And also it's community driven. So basically we do not force roadmap or whatever as let's say Jenkins governance board or governance meeting. But instead of that, uh, we delegate that uh, to entities within the projects, including plugin maintainer teams, uh, uh, special interest groups, sub projects, and actually whatever other entity we have in, uh, within the community and the ecosystem. So this is the idea. Uh, there is a lot of documentation here to which uh, we could go for. Uh, and we also have a proof of concept uh, which has been de developed over past weeks. So one month ago, we had a governance meeting and they, we approved uh, publishing a roadmap as a draft state. And I can show you how it looks like. So we already started reaching out um, to various entities and we collected a lot of feedback about items that they would like to focus. So if you take a look at this list, you can see that there is a lot of items all over there. Some I, uh, all these uh, items are quite big and we try to put uh, big initiatives on the table because we want to facilitate contributions. Uh, we want uh, these uh, efforts to be major, but still uh, there is a lot of them and uh, likely we will get more once uh, this uh, roadmap is socialized because we haven't uh, done any promotion yet except uh, developer mailing list. And uh, we know that not all plugin maintainers uh, really follow developer mailing list. So we have a, a quite a good number of items. So how this roadmap is organized at the moment? Again, everything is a subject to change, and that's why we have this meeting and few the meetings to collect feedback and to adjust. Uh, so instead of grouping them just by entity, let's say platform special interest group or pipeline offering, we try to focus group it by um, use cases. Uh, so for example. Uh, before that, we had a job management, but now there is pipeline authoring and development tools. So we're developing uh, pipelines in Jenkins, uh, tool and service integrations, and then user experience and interface. So 
not exactly new features, but also, well, you know, that uh, user experience is really important and it's one of the uh, uh, top items when we collect feedback about Jenkins. And if we go down, we start hitting uh, areas which are rather focusing uh, Jenkins administrators. So we put end users first, then we have administrators. So here we have management and administration, including uh, Jenkins configuration as code, including uh, other changes like remote and over web sockets. So this is for administrators. Also a specific section for cloud platforms. It's mostly Kubernetes, cloud providers, and other things. Yeah, we know that uh, cloud native special interest group in Jenkins is dormant. I have a long standing uh, action item to uh, cover that, but still we have some items uh, which we discussed before, and uh, which I put uh, attentively on the roadmap, and hopefully we'll have more details. And uh, for more classic platforms, we have Platform C, and thanks uh, to all Platform C contributors, we actually have a lot of items here. So it's uh, Java support, Windows support, a lot of roadmap items for official Docker images for different platforms, because there is a high interest uh, to run a Jenkins uh, somewhere uh, outside the uh, Linux Docker images. And uh, thanks a lot to all contributors. And then uh, we also have documentation, though maybe we should move documentation high because it focuses users. Uh, yeah, let's discuss it later. And after that, we also have project internal stuff. So what it means, just infrastructure. So infrastructure is a backbone of Jenkins organization and a lot of changes uh, are visible. For example, recently we migrated plugin site uh, to a static website. Then just a few days ago, thanks to Olivier, we also moved it to Fastly uh, CDN and now just loads immediately, which helps uh, users and uh, there is a lot of other infrastructure items which are mission critical to the project. And we want uh, to highlight them on the roadmap. Uh, then uh, plugin uh, developer tools, again, important for uh, Jenkins developers, uh, important for the future of our project. And also community marketing outreach, including all programs we participate in, like Google Summer of Code, Community Bridge, also, we drive agent terminology cleanup within this uh, special interest group. So we had meetups recently with the name uh, Docker images, but there is a lot of such topics, which is currently here, but maybe we should move it to up to documentation. And last but not least, uh, Jenkins governance. So for example, here the item for public roadmap. Uh, so this is how it uh, looks from user uh, perspective. Again, uh, it may look uh, that it's already parked. Um, and uh, this is a topic uh, to discuss because we actually still have color dimension here, which we didn't use. So currently colors uh, basically represent, represent the status. But instead of that, we could use them for additional grouping. And we also could basically discuss any other topic about uh, the layout. So everything is subject to change. How uh, is the backend um, implemented? So originally the roadmap was inspired by BlueOcean roadmap, uh, which uh, was hosted on Jenkins IO website uh, for a few years. Uh, currently it's removed. Uh, BlueOcean roadmap was implemented uh, using uh, JSON uh, data files and uh, JavaScript, which was loading these JSON files and showing them. Uh, but after a few iterations, we actually switched to another approach. So this entire roadmap is basically implemented using uh, more classic uh, website technology. So it's mostly HAML. Uh, and uh, this HAML uh, just gets data from a YAML file uh, located in the Jenkins IO repository. So basically we have open data, everyone can access this file, can download this for whatever their own uh, processing needs. And uh, yeah, this file uh, has full contribution history. So everything presented on the roadmap is basically supplied by this file. Yeah, it's getting quite long call already. Okay, so this is what we have with uh, the roadmap now. Again, uh, any feedback is appreciated. Uh, and uh, my plan for this roadmap is to actually uh, get more items, more feedback, and maybe within one month or so, we'll discuss publishing it as a final version, if everyone is happy with what we've got by that moment.
but uh, it's not an immediate uh, thing. I do not expect us to approve it as a final roadmap today, that's for sure. And I do not think it's ready. I think, can I just add something on this roadmap? Uh, I think it's really great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Um, I think it's really great and it's really important for the project. But something that I would, I would maybe try to emphasize is um, I think the different components should be updated by the different uh, leaders. Um, so uh, I think it's really important that, for example, uh, there are some points for the infrastructure. And mm -hmm. yeah, this is something that we should all do, like uh, be sure that it's always up to date because I don't think it should be the role of you or one single person to be sure that all the different mm -hmm. components are, 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 are correct. Yeah, uh, so regard, speaking of that, we have job 14, which basically documents all the process. And there is also an item for roadmap items like maintenance. So for maintenance, firstly, we expect the uh, initiative side meters or managers uh, to actually keep uh, the roadmap up to date. Again, if you want to update it, you just submit a pull request against this YAML file, then it gets reviewed. We also got uh, all automation. So when you submit a change, it automatically uh, requests reviews from governance of board members and uh, attacks it accordingly. Um, but basically this roadmap uh, can uh, be updated at any moment, but by any contributor, assuming that it gets uh, approvals and reviews. We also have a roadmap review meeting uh, documented in the job, uh, but it's uh, rather a regular scrap, let's say, uh, I guess monthly in the doc uh, document, or maybe even uh, less often, uh, which we will be using uh, just for additional uh, adjustments and maybe for defining future things, but not for runtime uh, status updates. I don't, I don't know what you think about that, but maybe it would be interesting to specify the dates uh, next to each uh, category. So, for example, let's say the documentation. Um, if, if I mean, if we know that the documentation category was updated over the last weeks or months, um, it can already good, give a good sign. Uh, and on the other side, if we see, let's say, for example, the infrastructure was not updated for months, uh, maybe someone should either ping the person or maybe take some ownership there because... Um, yeah. So, yeah, currently we can uh, do that um, at the governance meeting. So, just by doing scrap, we can take a look at uh, what is the activity, so which items uh, seem to be stalled. Of course, uh, there is a magic feature there like blame. Not to blame somebody, but uh, to see uh, when things uh, we updated. So we can technically uh, check it from the website. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, if needed, we could split it to separate files, etc. Uh, but I thought that at least for initial implementation, it would be better to keep everything uh, in a single place. Yep. Yeah, I also think uh, I'm also in favor to have everything in one file. So mm -hmm. Olivia, your your desire there was to see which which items in the roadmap might not have had recent activity, but isn't isn't the measure of activity really not so much an entry in this file as it is project activity somewhere else that's behind this thing. This is if if for instance we don't update a particular row record in this file. I'm not sure we've gained as much, but if we fail to make progress on some something that we thought was on the roadmap with its backend efforts, that seems like a more interesting piece of data. I'm not is or is that have I misunderstood your idea? My 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 idea is not not more like um, we the idea is more like um, if you are a contributor, if you want to understand if something is working, we need a way to know. Um, um, if some help is needed in that specific area. And so, for example, if you see that there are, I mean, for example, a specific a category is not updated anymore, maybe it seems that the person who was working on that was maybe working on something else, or maybe delay, or whatever. And maybe it would be interesting not, not to blame that person, but just to see, hey, can I help you and see how we can move this, this category forward. And maybe that's, yeah, it's more like, it's it's not really in the idea of blaming uh, on someone, but more um, to see if, if someone can help and how to identify um, that. Mm. Yeah. It's open source, so there is no blame. Life happens, um, what okay. happens, uh, yeah, COVID-19 also happens like we know now. Uh, so yeah, it's hard to predict anyone, anything. Uh, here, 
yeah, firstly, many roadmap items are actually tied to sub-projects or SIGs. So for example, here, if we talk about infrastructure, there is a weekly infrastructure meeting and it would be great if the infrastructure team just uh, dedicates some time, let's say every month to take a look at the roadmap and do scrap on their own. So that we don't need a governance meeting for that. Obviously, it uh, becomes a bit more complicated when it comes, let's say, uh, to feature areas. Because what is the weakness of the current roadmap? It's quite shallow in terms of features being deliver, delivered by, uh, to users. Because yeah, we have a lot of infrastructure thing, packaging thing, but features are being developed in plugins. Features are less coordinated at the moment, especially user-facing ones. So once we facilitate it across plugin ecosystem, ask uh, contributors to put something related to plugins, so for example, I put promotion support for pipeline jobs. Uh, if you're familiar with the story, it has been around like for three years. Uh, it's not only in future right now, it's also in my personal hall of shame. Uh, so, but yeah, there might be such items, but we are still uh, interested to collect them. Uh, we are especially interested to collect ones which are in current and near term, because uh, these ones are what, uh, what is moving the project now. Yeah, I understand the concern, but I think that uh, current job can address it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, any other feedback, comments? If no, I have a few questions to you. Should I put them in the doc? So, first question to you is, uh, do you think that the current categorization is fine? Or do we need to rework it somehow? I think it's fine at this stage um, since it's something that's just kind of getting started. Um, it, it might need to be updated in the future, but I think it's good for now. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, se I second that as or third that as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we might more uh, add a bit more uh, content here. So today I sent a message to the GSOC public mailing list about uh, GSOC project ideas, uh, because apparently the most of our project ideas we have on the table here uh, do qualify as potential roadmap items. And uh, current stated that we have some project ideas on the roadmap, but not all of them. So maybe I'll just uh, do another bulk update. And there is a lot of features there which we could uh, highlight. Let's see. Still, if you have something in mind, if you work on a particular plugin uh, or an area which is not listed, uh, please uh, let us know. Uh, just comment in the developer mailing list or submit a pull request so we can add it. Okay. And second question to you is about uh, relations because current file basically has one category and all initiatives are grouped by this category. But we already hit cases where this approach isn't uh, the best one. So for example, there is pipeline auto link seek and they have pipeline documentation in the roadmap for the future. But at the same time, I should go to the documentation. Pretty much the same for Kubernetes documentation uh, because it should go to cloud native seek probably. So my question is whether we would like to support uh, multiple categories or whether we would like to keep things simple. I personally would like to see just keep it simple, at least for the mm -hmm. first, this first iteration. I think more what I would want to see is this get out to the public faster. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the way it is now is really good. We can iterate. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm more the other direction that I would like multiple categories, but I'm prone to agree with Marky that I'm not sure there's enough benefit to delay making this available in favor of adding this support for multiple categories. This is already intensely valuable in focusing our, my efforts, helping me to think more clearly. So multi-category won't won't dramatically improve that. Okay, 
So in the worst case, we'll just uh, make a break uh, change in the YAML file. I mean, yeah, I don't expect anyone to really consume this file anytime soon. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, another thing is about color rank. So, firstly, uh, thanks a lot uh, to Zbigniew Konechny who actually helped me to fix color rank there because original uh, things uh, were terrible. And actually, it also has cool mobile view now. Uh, so, it's one of the only uh, on a, of a few pages which look uh, good on the mobile now on the website. We need to have more. Uh, but the question about coloring uh, again: uh, Does anyone want to try something else with categorization? So, for example, special color for documentation, special color for features. So, within because this uh, coloring looks uh, great, but basically it's inherited from Blue Ocean. And it doesn't uh, create anything on its own. Uh, well, no additional value. Would it be nice? Um, would it be nice to specify the um, the SIG, or is it systematic? Because it, so the, right now the different category. I mean, I, I, I'm just an idea, but maybe it would be nice to uh, to have to know which SIG. Um, Mm -hmm. is working on that specific uh, component so we know which meeting to attend yeah so right now it might be a bit tricky because it really depends on uh, which item you click uh, some groups uh, they have explicit links uh, well uh, you can see that uh, there is a description there are descriptions so there are links for all items again we are still cleaning it up because the original version was just a brain dump then after all the discussions we added more and more links uh, but uh, theoretically, many items already reference something where you can get contacts. Also, there is metadata like this one, which is currently not represented on the layout, but it's in my to-do list. So there will be some links uh, to these channels when you go here. Let's say you, user experience, you will see a, a additional pop-up here, which will link you to the channels, etc. And for items, yeah, again, it really depends. For example, here you uh, will go to Jira. Um, for some items, uh, let's say like documentation or platform seek, we created uh, landing pages right on the seek pages. So for example, here, if you go to, let's say cloud native Java support, uh, here you land on the platform seek page. And on the platform seek page, here yeah, you can find the content. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this experience uh, is also not that good. And uh, some items just uh, reference jobs. So here, for example, if you click, you go to the Jenkins enhancement proposal and uh, all our, our format for Jenkins enhancement proposals uh, presumes that there is discussions to metadata. But yeah, again, your mileage may vary depending on uh, the item you click. So if you want to have unified experience for that, I totally support that and I open to suggestions. So just to be sure I'm understanding. So the idea there is I'm a, I'm a new arrival contributor and I would like to help with modernized mirror, mirror infrastructure or with user guide improvements. And mm -hmm. so the idea that Olivier was proposing was some way of when I click on that thing I, of my interest, that it takes me to a way to reach out to others, which, which I think, Oleg, you were saying, the chat channels was, is an example of how to reach others yeah. about that topic. Yeah, that basically that was uh, what I was suggesting. So I, I mean, an easy way because the, the Jenkins community is quite big. You have a lot of different initiatives. And and it's not always easy to it's not always easy to know if you are supposed to go on Gitter if you are supposed to go on RC and on whatever, and so mm -hmm. I was just suggesting that if you want to to participate, I just click here and then you have all the information, um, mm -hmm. yeah, to know how you can help basically, yeah. or, how, or how how we can have more information about that specific components. Yeah, one thing we could do actually uh, to support a uh, drop down for components. So for example, you add something I think, to the left. 
you click on that and you get a list of potential items like contacts, uh, project description, whatever else uh, we add. And we can actually uh, traverse these links. So you don't have to put everything uh, to the uh, YAML file. For example, how we do it for GSOC project ideas. Uh, just to show an example, because for project ideas, uh, again, we hit the same problem. Each project idea right now, uh, the project has its own communication channels. Uh, and some communication channels are in Gitter, some in LC, some in Slack. Oh, well, okay. And here, if you take a look, there are links. So, for example, here you can see that uh, there is mailing list which points to platform seek. There is chat which points to Gitter uh, for Git plugin, and there is meetings which uh, links to JSOC. So how it's handled, actually there is some metadata injected in the project idea. And we just uh, uh, traverse this metadata with support inheritance. So for example, here you can see that the Gitter is defined here explicitly, but the rest of the channels that they actually come from uh, platform definition. And regarding meetings, I guess that there is a bug somewhere because it should point uh, to platform seek meetings. But uh, yeah, so theoretically, I could implement something like that. So we support seek or project uh, reference, and then uh, a website builder just uh, restores all the links. Bonus points for newbie friendly issues, but yeah, it's maybe a big ask. Okay, so. If it helps, I'll try to implement it. Yeah, I mean, if you have some time for that, yeah, it would, I think would be useful. I definitely have some time to finish roadmap. This year for me, it's one of the most important items. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anything else about the roadmap? Uh, Alec, uh, this is my first meeting, and so I'm just trying to clarify some, some issues in, about this, not issues, but questions about this roadmap. Uh, there is current released categories, uh, and my understanding right now that if there is no background in the current, it is not a button. And if there is like green, uh, in the release, for instance, if there is green background, it is a button which is Clickable, I understand. Is it oh, correct? No, it's not correct. Actually, all of it uh, are buttons. Well, not actually buttons, it's just uh, whatever diff spans combination with a lot of CSS around that. Uh, but yeah, you can see that uh, there are some uh, metadata. So, for example, pop up description. Again, it comes from the YAML file. Uh, there is also hyperlink. But uh, the behavior really depends on uh, which data is supplied through YAML. So um, uh, coloring is just status. So release the uh, green, uh, in progress a uh, yellow, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just status coloring. It doesn't represent any content in the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Vlad, did that address your question? Uh, yes, I was a little bit uh, confused about released and current uh, categories because I thought that, uh, 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 well, released, it means it's current, but I guess it is like uh, uh, it, uh, all these categories define, I guess, the progress, how we're moving from left to right. Yeah, but, I th yeah, but release means it's done done. Uh, where so it's more like you read from right to left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so status is also documented uh, in a YAML file uh, and in JEP. Uh, so yeah, basically release that initiative is completed. There might be still uh, some follow-up items uh, to be completed, but largely it's delivered. For example, plugin site, it's largely delivered, but yeah, you know that there are things to be improved, uh, even major things like CDN. But in principle, this feature was available to users and it was really working well. And uh, same for others. But yeah, these statuses, again, they're suggested in Jenkins enhancement proposal. So formally at the current state, they are not slated in stone. And if anyone uh, 
wants to change them, please do that. Uh, you can just uh, suggest uh, a change in the job, or you can submit a pull request uh, against the job with your suggested changes, and we can adjust. So everything right now can be changed. That's why we keep this job as a, in the draft state. And yeah, thanks a lot to Alex Earl because he is now officially a BDFL delegate in this job. Yeah. So Alex will be doing final approval for that. Mm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, basically this is a summary of status. We are using horizons again because common feedback about roadmaps is whether you commit uh, on delivery dates. Now in the community we don't uh, commit on delivery dates and we don't really commit on delivery at all uh, because that's how open source projects work. But instead of that, we set up some horizons which are also a bit blogger sometimes. Mm -hmm. I still I still remind people that maps of roads do not generally have dates on them. They just don't. Uh, yeah, it's a subject for long holy wars. <laughs> yes. Uh, especially for particular people, but yeah, whatever. Okay, any other questions, comments, or should we move on? Sounds good. Okay, thanks all for your feedback. And again, anything uh, you have in mind, please uh, uh, comment in the mailing list uh, so that uh, we can uh, incorporate these uh, suggestions. And uh, I noted the uh, action items. Thanks a lot for your feedback, Olivia. Okay, so we have something like 20 minutes left, but all other topics should be uh, more simple. So Google season of docs. Mm. Mark, would you like to summarize it? Or would you like? I would, yeah. So Google season of docs is a project sponsored by Google where they encourage professional technical writers, experienced, skilled technical writers who may not have any experience in an open source community to assist the open source community by becoming contributors to open source projects. This year, their plan is that they will host 50 slots for technical writers to assist open source projects in designated selected themes and projects for those open source organizations. Mm -hmm. Examples, well, the Jenkins Project or the FreeBSD Foundation or others like it uh, have specific conceptual things that they would like to have a multi-month effort with a, a skilled professional working on their project. Now, these professional technical writers may not have experience with Git or with open source workflows. And so there's growth for the, the writer and growth for the, the, the open source project. Did that, did that give a good enough description there, Oleg, or are there things that you'd like to add? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, one thing to mention is that uh, Google Season of Dogs is generally a long running program being compared to JSOC. Because yeah, fork admins JSOC never ends, but uh, for students, for mentors, it's several months. Uh, in the case of JSOT, it's uh, much longer time frame. So there are long uh, time projects which are up to nine months. There are uh, short projects, but again, the full cycle day is more than six months. Um, and actually, um, it's quite good for the community because, well, in Jenkins project, we definitely would uh, benefit from better documentation. Uh, we facilitated a lot of contributors to documentation over past years, thanks to, and past months, thanks to plugin uh, documentation migration project, uh, Jenkins IO enhancement. So what I reported uh, in 2019 report, we had more than, sorry, almost 200 uh, contributors to documentation, uh, but still we could uh, use a lot of dedicated effort. And for us, it's a good opportunity. And yeah, I'm just changing the page. You can see that uh, there is a lot of different open source organizations participating and they have uh, a lot of success stories for JSOC. So 
personally, I think that uh, it would be great uh, to participate, um, but we have a problem because we need ORC admins, we need mentors to run a project. But again, uh, as Mark said, there are only 50 ones. So it means that we need one mentorship, uh, mentoring team. We probably need one uh, ORC admin. So it's not like JSOC where we scale um, and uh, we invite uh, dozens of contributors uh, to participate. But still, uh, it needs some commitments uh, to get this project running. And this is why I put it uh, on the roadmap, because, oh, sorry, on the governance meeting, because uh, there is a thread. But in this thread right now, we don't have consensus. Uh, we don't have ORC admin. Uh, there are people who are interested to be mentors, potentially. But uh, there are some potential project ideas. Uh, and we need to decide whether we want to push this effort or not. And we need to give, uh, decide timely because the deadline is May 4th. All right, and we will, we will discuss further in the DOCSIG meeting this Friday, but, but you're right. I don't feel like I've personally got the capacity to act as an org admin. Um, I'm open to be persuaded otherwise, but with Google Summer of Code and other activities, I'm feeling pretty loaded. It's quite similar to me. I'm ready to dedicate some time in order to create a landing page. So for example, what we have in JSOC uh, project, yeah, JSOC. Uh, so we have um, basically uh, JSOC documentation site, our subsite within uh, Jenkins.io, uh, where we have our, our own guidelines, our own lending, uh, information for mentors, for students. Also, we have a listing of project IDs which I presented. Uh, I can create lightweight uh, version of that for Google Seasonal Docs uh, under the umbrella of Docs Seek. Uh, but uh, regarding uh, maintaining uh, the program, I'm not uh, ready to do it alone. So if there is somebody who is willing to participate as an ORC admin and uh, who would be interested to mentor particular documentation projects, for example, uh, uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes, or just the work of solution pages, like we discussed a couple of days ago that our solution pages are really bad. Uh, we could improve them a lot, but we need people working on that. So. If there is somebody who is interested uh, to work on these projects, and who uh, likely who is also a native speaker, uh, or at least uh, much better uh, English speaker than me, because all the GSO documentation should be in English. Uh, it's a strong uh, decision by, by GSO that it's yeah. only about English, it's not about localization. So if there are contributors uh, who are interested to consider that, I'm ready to help with uh, getting to the framework on the website. I would be interested to participate, but I'm not a native speaker. Uh, uh, so question to you a lot. Would you be interested to participate uh, as a mentor or as a participant? Because uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say uh, for the beginning, I would be interested to participate as a participant because I'm not sure what are responsibilities of the mentor. And uh, yeah. Which so is already is already quite encouraging because. So the correct uh, terminology for JSOC is mentor, right? Okay. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yep. So yeah, for me it's a part time. Uh, yeah, okay. There is Sladen, uh, your audio isn't that good. Your audio is still breaking up, Sladen. Sorry.
the slide and I was interested to participate. So anyone else? So I could I could spend Oleg, I think, part time as a mentor. The challenge mm -hmm. is I don't think I can be a an org admin. I just I don't have the capacity for that. For instance, I'm I'm reviewing Vlad's recent contribution, and I'm delighted. It's really it's marvelous. It's wonderful what he's done. Uh, that that kind of role works great for me. Org admin feels more than I can take on. Okay. Mm, yeah. I'll see whether I could uh, facilitate another part time org admin because I guess we still need two for JSON. Um, yeah, and if I find someone, uh, we could kick it off. What, what's the current deadline for this? May 4, so we've got about two weeks. Okay. But it's two weeks uh, to get the application uh, submitted to have a website in place. So last year we applied, but basically we applied with Google Doc link. And this, yeah, since JSOT uh, accepts only 50 projects and last year there were more than 200 applications, obviously with Google Doc, we were not accepted. Right. So yeah, this year we definitely need something better if we even want to try. So. Yeah, uh, is the audio better now? Yes. yes. Much. Okay. Great. <laughs> I switched on to my mobile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so as I was saying, I would be interested to participate as a participant. But if the team doesn't have any, I mean, if it's difficult for, uh, I mean, as an organization to uh, get mentors, I would be interested in participating as a mentor as well. So I don't know. I mean, it's, um, it's a bit of a confusion. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, I would, I would be willing to contribute in any in any way. I mean, if there are enough mentors, I could participate. But if mm -hmm. are, there aren't enough mentors, then um, I would have to participate as a mentor. Yeah, thanks uh, a lot for the suggestion. One thing we need yeah. would need to clarify is about potential conflicts with JSOC yep. because yep, yeah, you sure. apply to, to JSOC as a student. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot of hidden stones uh, there, uh, and I yeah, suggest uh, we discuss it uh, after May fourth. Yeah, no, no, no issues, no issues. All right. Yeah, but till then I would okay. still love to help you on the landing page and stuff. Yeah, so okay. let me know if you need any help. Yeah, cheers, guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'll uh, take a look. But yeah, well, like you can I'm put really me down for, you can put me down for a part-time uh, org admin. Okay, I can I can help you with that. Okay, then we actually have a team. So, yeah, if everyone uh, is fine, I'm willing to give it a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, just to be sure that the scoping is clear in this one, it's we accept that at most we would take on one mentee. Uh, we wouldn't want more than that, and we would frame that around a project to improve the documentation in some valuable way. And that's why we have Jenkins roadmap because right. uh, we already have prioritized projects in different areas which are related to documentation. And we use, can use these outreach programs to facilitate these projects. Pretty much like we do with JSOC project ideas. Though there was no roadmap at that point, but all project ideas we had, they really valuable to the community and to the Jenkins future. Right. So we can naturally convert some of these documentation projects, et cetera, to project ideas. And so that's it. In terms of roadmap, then, for instance, there are some topics that I think are, are smaller, for instance, than Jenkins on Kubernetes on this picture is, for me, a, a massive but highly valuable, likewise, administrator guide. But, but I think there could be smaller things, the solution page rework, which it would be okay for that to be on the roadmap, Oleg, are you envisioning that that would be roadmap roadmap worthy, or is that too small? I would for uh, envision that because uh, if we talk about solution pages, I believe that it's not really uh, that small effort. So right now we have uh, yeah. So there is a solutions page. It looks awesome. Again, uh, thanks to Zbigniew because there was a pull request a couple of days ago. But if you click inside, 
Right. There's almost no content and it's yeah. varying quality. Yes. Yeah. So I think we need to rework everything. We also need to put more solution pages uh, because yeah, uh, there are some items, but uh, these items just the group uh, the strategy there because yeah, there are technology ones which are really important to have, but also uh, use case ones like for example, continuous delivery, but there is also only continuous delivery there, what we do with it, how we group that, maybe how we add additional tools, because yeah, Bitbucket server, thanks to contributors, they added that. But mm -hmm. you could have the same for GitLab, for example, or we could uh, have the same, let's say, uh, for static analysis tools, for security scanning tools, and so on. So this effort may become uh, a topic for multiple JSONs. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So it is a good fit. Thank you. Yep. So if you want to add it to the roadmap, just do that. Okay. I think it would be available. Okay. So the next topic, which is uh, quite small. Um, is about uh, an old report to SPI. So just to share some context, uh, there was a request from SPI to share uh, several um, uh, paragraphs of what Jenkins did in the previous years. Uh, we have uh, yeah, already created a draft and submitted it for review. So my question to governance board members and all other contributors is whether you're fine with the current wording. Uh, basically, it's uh, a short summary of what we have uh, in the New Year blog post, which we published. So it just uh, tries to condense it uh, to a smaller format. Um, if everyone is fine, I would just ship it to SPI so that they can include that in the annual report. Yes, good with, good for me. Mm -hmm. I reviewed it. Me. I like it. Yeah, plus one for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive. Okay, so uh, yeah, if uh, anybody has some uh, point of light, I will uh, wait till tomorrow, let's say, uh, morning uh, US time zone. Um, and uh, if not, I will, uh, if there is no feedback, I will submit the current version. Mm. Morning US time zone, but which, which side of the US? Okay, 2 p.m. UTC. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, actually submitted by whom? So you can just say Jenkins project, uh, Jenkins contributors, whatever. Uh, usually, uh, so there is an example of SPI report where they put usually names, but I would rather prefer uh, to keep a uh, project entity instead. Uh, but yeah, as uh, others prefer, I can uh, do whatever. For me, the Jenkins Governance Board would be a great, a great choice. But if you would prefer individual, your name is also honorable. You you created the vast majority of that content, so that'd be great. Um, yeah, I agree. So Jenkins Board, Tommy, or something else like Advocacy and Outreach C. I think you should say your name, and then yeah. just put, your, put your title as part of the Jenkins Board. Yeah. yeah. I'm also in favor of that. Okay, then let's do that. Personally, I have no preference. Uh, good? Yep, looks good. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, again, 2 p.m., uh, last minute feedback, and then I will ship it. Okay, and uh, image usage request. So we have five minutes left, right? Uh, because uh, Zoom icons uh, close uh, the time, uh, the clock on my Windows uh, panel. So that's yeah, why the meeting uh, takes so long. So yeah. Okay, so there is a request from Chris Orr. Um, actually, he forwarded the request uh, from somebody else because 
uh, Chris's uh, press contact. So he received an email and he forwarded to that. And they want to actually request permission to use uh, Jenkins logo in uh, whatever configuration panel. So usually we, we don't care too much. Um, so what we have, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's a broken yeah. hyperlink. So we have um, a bunch of logos. Actually, we have more than that, but and we still encourage wow. contributors to submit uh, the artwork, uh, but it uh, takes a while. Uh, but uh, what is the interesting part about that, that all logos listed here, they actually listed there under Creative Commons license uh, uh, 3.0. Uh, so uh, technically, all these logos can be freely reused, modified, etc. But there is a caveat uh, there because all these logos uh, should have a reference, uh, 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 should include attribution to the Jenkins project uh, according to the license. But historically, we didn't care about that at all. And to be honest, I don't see a particular reason to care especially for Jenkins logo, which is pretty recognizable uh, without any additional attributions. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm a plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should just approve it. I mean, it says here that it can be used under Creative Commons, so yeah. as mm -hmm. long as they follow the, the license, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus one from me. Plus, plus one. one as well. And I'm a non really, binding think... plus one. I thought that the answer there was, I like the answer from Daniel Beck that said that as far as he could, uh, the, my interpretation of his answer was they can use it without even asking for permission. This is not a trademark usage, which, which really requires formal governance approval, right? Mm -hmm. This is something different than using the trademark. Yeah. So I think we just approve that, just in case. But yeah, I think whatever. Okay, and other topics. So two minutes. I left. have to. I have to yeah. drop. I have a hard stop for another meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your participation, Marke. Yeah, uh, other, uh, next meeting, uh, I guess it will happen uh, in two weeks as usual. I, so, I had one quick thing, Oleg, if that's yeah. all right. So I just wanted to uh, kudos to the release team, uh, having released the first, get it on the public recording, uh, the, the first release under the new release environment. So a couple of them actually. So that was, that was, that was pretty awesome. Just want to give kudos to those guys. They did awesome. And I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Actually, it's a good thing to do. So uh, at the SIG meetings and project meetings, we start from news section. So maybe we should start uh, doing the, uh, um, it also at the governance meetings. So just to uh, highlight such major achievements. Okay. But yeah, really congrats uh, to all involved and especially to Olivier because yeah, it was uh, something like two years effort. Uh, it required a lot of different changes across the project and uh, it's great to see that it's finally. So, yeah, thanks. I, I, yeah, I, think, I, I think that ticket is even older. I mean, the EPIC. Uh, I think I should just close the EPIC for now once the weekly pull is totally validated. Yeah. But um, I think the EPIC, yeah, it's a very old ticket. Yep. Mm, yeah. I guess uh, when I joined uh, the project in 2012, it was already actively discussed at the time. I'm not sure whether we had a ticket, but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, how do we do the next meeting? Like that in Zoom or like before in IRC? Uh, Zoom works pretty well, I think. Um... I think IRC works pretty well too. So I, I guess it's maybe if there are specific topics that we um, would do well with an actual voice or video communication, maybe we go towards Zoom. If there are things that are just like a needing approvals, maybe that's an IRC meeting. I, I don't know. 
I'm good either way. But yeah, for me, this this meeting, this this meeting in RSC would have been a complete disaster. Zoom for these topics was crucial. Um, yep. I I like Alex's idea. If agenda motivates it, we should use Zoom. I'd also be fine if we use Zoom all the time. I have no problem with Zoom. I like this, the interaction. Yeah. Person, personally, personally, I like to have this kind of meeting versus having those in RC because I find those, I mean, I find this kind of meeting, um, I mean, I'm less distracted at least. So it's easier to just stay focused on the meeting and be sure that, okay, I would just follow what the discussion where on RC it's easy to work on something else. So, but yeah, that's a personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my proposal, uh, we wait for agenda items. So everyone is welcome to submit agenda items. And maybe several days uh, before the meeting, uh, we decide whether we do Zoom or RC. And uh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, we've yeah. got a new Zoom account. So we will be working on granting permissions uh, to board members, seek leaders, etc. So they can uh, host uh, Zoom meetings on their own like they used to do with uh, Hangouts on Air uh, a couple of years ago. So we will restart this experience for everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks all. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks. Thanks, right, thanks everyone. Yeah. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Bye.